Hi, my name is Ronald Mason, President of the University of the District of Columbia, the public institution of higher learning in and for the nation's capital. We live in a district that seeks to be a national model of urban sustainability. Yet the Rockefeller Foundation said that our stability over time is threatened by our large and growing income gap. Yet that same Rockefeller Foundation report cited us as one of the 100 most resilient cities in the world. Resilient because we are willing to invest in those things that help close that gap, to help make us not only a sustainable and resilient community, but an equitable community as well. That is why among Mayor Bowser's highest priorities is putting more people on the pathway to the middle class. In that regard, we offer for you today a PowerPoint presentation called The Equity Imperative, Completing the Pathways to the Middle Class, a case to regenerate the University of the District of Columbia as a public higher education model of student success. Our mayor has noted that education is key to attaining middle class status. That is because the median household income in the United States is $59,000, but in the district it's $75,000. When broken down by racial categories, for whites in the district, median household income is $127,000 a year, $99,000 for Asians, $65,000 for Latinos, and $37,891 for African Americans. The level of educational attainment makes a difference. The median salary in the district is $60,000 a year. A high school degree earns $30,000 a year, but a bachelor's degree earns $65,886. Yet the distribution of such credentials is uneven. 25.6% of African Americans and 41.5% of Latinos hold college credentials. Yet 92% of white D.C. residents hold college degrees. It is clear that the values of middle class, secure finances, healthy families, equitable education, and stable communities are all attainable with a college-level credential. And where are the people who need a pathway to the middle class? Well, they're in our public school systems. D.C. public and public charter schools are 70% African American, 17% Latino, and 80% economically disadvantaged. In public higher education, 72% of UDC degree-seeking students are D.C. residents. 60% of them are African American, 10% are Latino, and 40% are economically disadvantaged. Thus, their pathway to the middle class is incomplete. Because when the control board cut the district's budget in the late 1990s to reset the future of the district, many believe that UDC's budget was cut much too deeply. In addition, since then, the district has reinvested in most of its major institutions, the libraries, the public school and public charter school system, the parks and recreation system, and turned them into national models uh, for the world to see. Yet the one institution, the linchpin of them all for the sustainability of the district's future, the public institution of higher learning, has yet to be reinvested in. That is why when compared to the national a percentage of the budget invested in higher education, which is 5.8%, Maryland, which is 4.5%, Virginia, which is 3.8%. The district's investment in public higher education accounts for only 1.1% of the district's local funds budget. The answer is to regenerate the University of the District of Columbia as a national model for student success where every student will achieve his or her highest level of human potential. The key to the district's future is a resilient, sustainable, and equitable community rest in our ability to produce more professionally certified workers and more citizens with college-level credentials. University, we have been working hard for the past two years to become trusted stewards of public resources. We are led by a board that is highly professional and very diverse. Our management at the highest levels has been replaced with highly qualified, nationally competitive leaders. We have attracted 63 new, very energetic faculty, but our challenge is not attracting them. Our challenge is being able to keep them 
because we cannot compete with the salaries of the other institutions of higher learning in the DMV. We have more seamless pathways to the bachelor's degree. We have a shared services model that is increased efficiency. We have a new pet staff performance and evaluation system and we are marketing now across the entire district. As a result, we are being able to see some progress. We were supposed to be on probation with our 10-year reaffirmation visit from Middle States, but we got 11 commendations. We were on probation with the federal government for federal financial aid, but we are now in good standing. We had no material audit findings for the past two years. Our increase in first-time first-year students is 51% from 2014 to 2017, and our retention rate has gone up by 10%. We started DC up for high performers from DC public and public, public charter schools. We thought we would get six in the first year. We had 48 the first year. And in the second year, we had 108. We settled our adjunct faculty union contract for the first time. And we also started our first PhD program. As a result, we've been getting national recognition for our work. We are number 99 out of 2,600 plus institutions in the country for upward mobility. That compares the salaries of our graduates to the salaries of their parents. We are the number one community college in the DMV, even though technically we do not have a community college, we have a branch campus that we call a community college. We are number six clinical program in the nation behind number five Yale, the number 10 HBCU in the nation. We are the least expensive university in the DMV, and we're number one in D.C. according to rankings of tuition, financial aid, degree options, and student success metrics. We are the only public university in and for the nation's capital, the only exclusively urban land-grant institution in the country, and UDC is unique in that we have three doors in. We have the workforce training door, we have the open admissions door, and we have the selective admissions door on the Van Ness campus. And these are stackable credentials such that every door can lead to the next door. You can come in through the workforce door and end up with a bachelor's degree. Yet, our challenges are great. We have insufficient personnel and personnel skills. We have old technology. Our servers are 20 years old. We have a 50-year-old infrastructure with pipes and wiring and heating and cooling systems that are totally outdated. Some of our classrooms have chalk and blackboards, and we have no student housing, which is an educational challenge for many of the students that we serve. Yet we have an overarching strategy. As the pinnacle of the District of Columbia public system of higher education, we will support the district in its continuing effort to be the model of a sustainable, resilient, and equitable community. We will create solutions to urban problems, train and support an exemplary workforce at all levels and in all sectors, and develop transformative ethical leaders, thus improving access to economic opportunity for all. Our first goal in that effort is to establish UDC as a public university model of urban student success. Our second goal is to increase the number of UDC degree and workforce credentialed graduates. Our third goal is to graduate transformative urban leaders who are also lifelong learners. The investment required to achieve this level of production is an increase from $78 million a year, which is our current uh, operating subsidy from the district, over a four-year period to about around $125 million a year, plus some additional one-time investments that are needed to make immediate adjustments. Primarily, these funds would be used to solve market-based compensation issues, resolve our staff and faculty union issues, and if possible, create some early retirement options for workers that have been at the university 40 years or more. In addition, uh, we have capital needs, 200 million of which are immediate and urgent. We would also like 45 million to upgrade and modernize the classrooms and then expand the Bacchus campus to make it our main community college and workforce training site. This would occur over a 10-year period, and we can reduce this to around $250 million if P3 options are funded through the operating budget. Now, at the end of the day, 
What we are saying is that we like to increase the portion of the state budget devoted to public higher education from 1.1% to a mere 1.78%. That is still less than 2% compared to 5% nationally. So the goal is to build a community that looks like this, where everyone has a chance at stable finances, healthy families, equitable education, and solid communities. One that is sustainable and resilient, but also equitable. So what is the pathway to the middle class? It is your public institution of higher learning, the public institution of higher learning in and for the nation's capital, the University of the District of Columbia. If you agree with what you have seen and heard here today, then ask Mayor Bowser to complete the pathways to the middle class by increasing over four years the operating subsidy of the University of the District of Columbia to $124.9 million from the current FY 2018 base of $78.6 million, and by providing a $724 million infusion of capital funding over the next 10 years for infrastructure repair, Bacchus expansion, and classroom modernization.